Do you remember the elation when we thought that the turbo situation was now well behind us? Well, it turns out that it's not really all behind us and there's quite a lot ahead of us. I'll tell you all about that in this video. discussing last night about doing some anchoring practice. Are you still wanting to do that today? Definitely. I really want to learn as much as I can because my intention is to be able to charter boats after this and to later most probably have my own boat and so the more I can pick up the more I can learn. Just going to do some practice anchoring with Michelle because you know we've got the bay to ourselves. This is a great place. There's very little wind, and so he's going to do a couple of practices, dropping the anchor first and bringing it back up, and then so Andrew's going to help him out with uh, that, uh, give him uh, pointers and advice, uh, and then we're going to have Michelle come back on the helm and he will drive the boat into position and uh, tell us when to drop anchor and how much to put out and so on and so forth. So let's have some fun playing anchoring. I'm not going to dig it right in, but she's in. All right, bring, bring her up. It's a Saturday morning and that of course means that today is the day that we release our latest video. But did you know that we also, on the same day, release our latest blogs? Every week Ansha and I write a blog from a his and hers perspective which ties in with the weekly video. And of course in the blogs we can go into a lot more depth about our thoughts and feelings. So if you haven't already, the web address of the location of the blogs is on the screen right now. Go there and check them out, have a read, and uh, let us know what you think of them in the comments section of the video. Also, a couple of other ways that you can help our channel grow is to make sure that when you watch the video, you go right from the beginning right to the end without skipping any bits in the middle. Also, when you see the little banner ads, let them run for 30 seconds, and that way we get paid from YouTube. Of course, if you do like the video, leave us a thumbs up and a comment, and if you've not already, become a subscriber. All of those little things cost you nothing but help us immensely, a lot more than you can imagine. So enjoy the video, enjoy the blogs, and let us know what you think in the comments section. So this one is actually measuring below the yeah. key. Yeah. Because that way, that makes it a two meters difference. It does make two meters difference, but that way I know if it's down to zero, then we're really at zero. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so neutral will be the turn. Yep, that's it. Yep. Ansha, we are drawing to do five, put 20 out, and let me know when 10 is in. Okay. So you've got your weather indicator here as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you're hard over at the moment. Yeah, we Yep, if you actually if you start dropping now, and just put it into this slow reverse. So, tell us to drop it. Okay, drop it. So that will bring us to a halt. Keeping the uh, the weather straight. 
YouTube. Take it to 30. Thank you. Okay, you can snap it. Switch of the MG is the with the key. No, wait, the red button. Wait, wait. Because we still need the power. That's right for the. Pardon? No, the wind will do do what it wants to do. The wind will pick up later this afternoon and pull it out. So Michelle, how was that anchoring practice? I think it went fine and uh, I really enjoyed it. Ansha showed me and then uh, I just followed the instruction and I think everything went fine. Okay. So that's good. Yeah. Is it different from your boat when you anchor? Yeah, because mine is not a chain, it's just a, a line. Ah. And so I just let the line go and then I just need not to forget to tie it because it's not attached to the boat. <laughs> so if I get distracted, it could be dangerous. But uh, so yeah, that makes the difference. But apart from that, the technique is the same, coming to the wind and uh, let that enough to go and then let it enough uh, length to, so the anchor can stay flat on the ground and so dig into the mud okay. so that do its job. So it's just same but chain? Yeah, Okay. the same but chain. Yeah. Cool. Iden did a sterling job of blanking off the turbo and fitting everything back to the engine and we did a test run down to Keck over and back and the engine ran fine and there didn't seem to be any problems. But then a can of worms opened and we had some experienced marine engineers drop some comments on the video. We also had some old salts drop some comments on the video. And it was kind of a 50-50 mix camp that we could do what we did and it all would be fine, or that we really shouldn't do what we did because it won't be fine. Now, a couple of people in particular, and I'll take you back to the boat and show you the emails that we had from them and the comments that we had from them, a couple of people in particular stand out as sterling subscribers and they will get an honorary mention very soon. Anyway, back to ABC. Howard Beer wrote, Hi, well I did say the turbo had let go. Have been a marine engineer for 40 years, you cannot remove it without changing the whole fuel system. I have warned you not to do this, okay? It is designed to operate with a turbo, i.e. fuel system, etc. What has been done will destroy your engine as it will be overfueling and will wash the lube oil from the bores. You cannot just remove the turbo. With no load, the exhaust will be clean, but when in gear, as the revs build over, say, 1800 to 2000, it will start to black smoke. Turbos, when not touched or messed with, are fine and you cannot just fit an overhaul kit yourself as the whole unit has to be balanced. And if you do not have this done at a specialist shop, it will destroy itself as yours has done. I could write on and on here re-turbos, but I have two on my Cummins engines which are 22 years old and never touched them and have never failed. Happy sailing guys, but when you get a chance, send the unit to a turbo shop in the UK for a rebuild, not the main dealer. Peter Denbrien, who's an old salt, Wow, Iden is right that it can be done. As I am an old engineer of over 50 years, it is correct what he say and stated. We did it in the past if at sea, the turbo from the main engine from an 11,000 horsepower went broken. Just blind them off and sail to destination. He is right saying about the black smoke, but that happens if you go too quick with the RPM. As long as you go slowly, it will be okay. However, in a sea where the vessel is moving due to the waves and you're on engine running when the propeller comes higher, deeper into the water, so more work for the engine. She may smoke a little. But you can sail her without changing the injectors. If you have a problem with it, then try to find with Yanmar the type of engine without turbo and buy those injectors. That will solve the problem. Anyway, the guy did a good job, and if you're content with it, just sail on and leave it as he rebuilt it and sail away happy ever after. Norman Boys says, it is good that you've established the source of the excessive oil consumption and that you have effected a temporary fix, but it is just that, and the engine is in essentially get me home mode. The reasons are multifactorial, but essentially the engine was designed for combustion aided by turbo. So valve timing, camshaft design, fuel pump calibration, fuel injector set pressures, injector nozzle ratings are all optimized to take advantage of boost pressure and achieve clean burn under all load conditions. If you run as you are for an extended period, you will prejudice your engine and potentially stump up a 10 to 12,000 euro replacement tab. 
I would recommend you give serious consideration to getting the turbo rebuilt by a UK specialist. It may not be as cheap as suggested by the other comments, as I suspect the damage is not just the cartridge, as the damage suggests to the turbo and exhaust valve casings are most certainly damaged beyond repair. An armchair viewer with 34 years marine diesel experience. Since the video went out and we received those comments, I've been in email contact back and forth with two people in particular. The first is Lars, the Swede in France. He has a marine maintenance business in the south of France and he's been very helpful with regards to replacing the turbo itself. The other person that I've had lots of chats with via email is Norman Boys, whose comment we mentioned uh, just previously. And Norman has gone to very long lengths to explain to me the exact reasons why we need to put the turbo back on. But he's also gone into a lot of detail about why, and this is what we've got to do before we put the turbo back on, we have to remove the uh, intake manifold, the exhaust manifold, and the cylinder head. And we've got to inspect those areas uh, for metal fragments which could have been ingested by the engine when the turbo imploded on itself. Now those metal fragments might be very small or they might be quite big. Either way, if they are in there, we've got to get them out because they will do damage to the engine and that will be very expensive damage. For now, ABC is grounded and I use that as the airline terminology, not the boating terminology. I have spoken to Iden and I have ordered uh, the three gaskets that we need to replace once we take those three parts off the engine for inspection. He says we will have those in a couple of days and then Kev and I are going to remove those two three parts, inspect thoroughly, clean where necessary and then put the gaskets on then put the air engine back together. Then we will look at getting a second hand or reconditioned turbo unit and put that back onto the engine. So once again thank you so much to everybody who um, left a comment, um, people with lots of experience, people with uh, just uh, practical hands-on things that they've done. It was really, really appreciated. And now we move on to the next stage of getting the ABC engine in tip-top working condition. While Barry's been doing that, I've been designing merch for our new online store. With the help of our son Luke, who's been working for weeks behind the scenes, making extensive changes to our website, we've given the site a fantastic new look and feel and made it mobile phone friendly. I've been busy designing the ABC logo for our new range of merch. I've also been making lots more pieces of Mermaid's Treasures jewellery. If you're buying our merch or jewellery as Christmas gifts, make sure you get in quickly to ensure that they arrive in time. And to our patrons, remember, you always receive a 15% discount on all of my jewellery. The link is on screen right now. Check it out and let us know what you think. Before I go, I'd like to welcome our newest patron, Vance Miller. It's great to have you on board, Vance. Thanks for watching and if you like what we do, you know what you need to do.